I'm Greg Yatman from Salona. With me, as always, is Mehmet Yavuz, our co-founder and CTO, and a special guest today who uh, Mehmet will be introducing. Uh, here at Office Hours, if you're just joining us for the first time, we talk about, well, pretty much everything under the sun, CBRS related. Uh, for those of you who are returning, thank you. And this episode is going to be more technical than we've been before, I think. Um, so cellular system identifiers, if I can just get the word out. Um, this is something that uh, I, I think we need to dig into. So Mehmet, if you don't mind, let's talk about it and find out why it is or isn't like Wi-Fi and what's so special about it. Sure. Hi, Greg. Hi, everyone. Yeah, basically, just like Wi-Fi networks, the CBRS LTE networks broadcast the network identity. Right, so when a mobile device comes into the coverage of a CBRS network, it will detect the network, get authenticated, and start getting service. So this whole operation for the CBRS LTE or 5G networks is a bit different than Wi-Fi, and the mechanisms that are used are really the mechanisms standardized in 3GBP, and today they are used by billions of mobile devices in uh, mobile network operator networks. So today we have a guest speaker, uh, Srini Balasubramanian. He's a distinguished member of technical staff at Salona, and Srini is an expert in this field, and he will provide some more insight in this area. Welcome, Srini. Glad to join you guys, Greg and Mehmet. Uh, okay, yeah, just to um, just charge on ahead here. I'm in the fundamentally, what we need to do is uh, the UE needs to find a network on camp on a particular system. Now the point is these devices are global where they need to be able to find the most preferred system anywhere in the world. The footprint of macro networks is fairly large relative to a Wi-Fi system. That means uh, the networks need to have very unique identifiers so that the device clearly knows what the identifier is. And if it is finding the most preferred system uniquely anywhere across the globe. So that's why it is very complex to have a lot more identifiers and a lot more clarity is needed or a cellular system device to find a network. All right, so let's assume that my cellular device needs to get onto a network system. Um, how does that happen? Fundamentally, it's not very different from what a Wi-Fi operates. Uh, you're looking for a very standards defined, 3GPP standards defined methodology, which is called cell selection. It is like finding a BSS ID. It just finds a PLM and ID in the network. Now, once you're within a network, it does cell reselection, which is also a well-defined methodology. Cell reselection methods is you're hopping from one access point to another, one E node B to another E node B. These networks are further subdivided and classified with further subdivided identifiers, which are like close subscriber group, only very specialized whitelisted devices can camp on it. And additionally, there is tracking area code to zone the paging uh, of the networks and management of the device, the devices within the network there. Now, how does all of this apply to a CBRS itself? CBRS Alliance has actually worked with INSI Alliance and acquired a unique PLM and ID, which can be used for enterprise system. It's, uh, the PLM and ID is 315010. Now, this is unique because for a macro network, they can use a unique PLM and ID, but this is used across all enterprise networks. So you need further classified identifiers to identify a specific enterprise network. That is, I'm, Network identifier, CBRS has defined something called as a NID, which is a network identifier, which can be populated in the CSG field inside the macro networks. Now, within the network identifier, we also have specific subscriptions which are there. And the subscriptions are something like the MZ of the devices that can camp on the enterprise network. And additionally, tracking area codes, which uniquely define the regions where the mobile is operating on. So these identifiers uniquely help identify a CBRS enterprise network and the UE uses those to find those networks. Okay, so that pretty clearly, um, I guess, uh, I under, uh, identifies or explains how CBRS networks identifiers work. But how does inbound roaming and neutral host work? We've talked about neutral host in a previous episode. How does that work? Yeah, sure. Um, just to jump in there, right? Everything Srini has described so far is applicable to private CBRS LTE networks. So at Salona, we provide this whole complete solution to our customers, uh, providing an end-to-end -end solution that works with standardized devices such as smartphones, tablets, or IoT gateways that an enterprise may be using. Now, of course, the other part, as we discussed in the previous videos, is what about the visitors and guests who may have devices from mobile network operators? When these visitors or guests come to the enterprise, 
what we call uh, inbound roaming or neutral host type servers uh, happens. And for those guests, there are really two aspects to consider. One is the authentication. The second part is the IP address assignment. So given Srini is with us today, I will let Srini comment further on these. Yeah, like mm -hmm. Mehmet pointed out, it's just two parts to it. Uh, it's simple as that. I mean, uh, it's just authentication. And authentication can be further divided depending upon the network node from the enterprise to the MNO core network that you're connecting. It either uses a radius method, which is actually a 2G, 3G type of authentication method, or switches into a higher gear, goes into a diameter-based authentication methods there. Additionally, right, the IP address assignment, which is there, it can be from the enterprise network, and it's otherwise termed as local break out, right? And uh, when you get the IP address from the MNO core, all traffic is routed from the MNO core. And any of these IP addresses can essentially be a static or a dynamic IP address or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Srini. And maybe just to conclude all this discussion, we talked about lots of technical details, but the bottom line is, as Salon, we provide this end-to-end -end solution and uh, as part of our infrastructure, we handle all these standardized uh, mechanisms and also the backend interfaces with uh, even the mobile operators for the roaming and so forth. But hopefully all this discussion was useful. Please continue watching us and sending us your comments. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much both. I think um, what you found here is that Solona takes these, these big concepts, slices them, dices them, um, breaks them down into um, consumable parts here at Office Hours. So please do like, subscribe, share. Make sure you come back for more episodes. Until then, we'll be here creating more, and Srini, I'm sure, will be a guest again. Soon.